Okay, stop. Um, these are the monitor, monitor audio studios. So if you look up studio monitor, that's not what we want. You look up monitor audio, that's a brand, but then they're also studio monitors are called studio monitors. And this is a brand of monitor audio. And these are the studios and there's a cat hair on it and they're sideways. I'm going to do a part of the review up here. I'm going to go down the basement where I like the acoustics better, but I've been fucking with them up here because this throne of pillows sideways and shit is where I spend most of my time watching my own videos, watching anime, watching TV shows, American gods, by the way. Great. Um, so the question bears, um, is this, don't forget gemstone in the title of Zeus, uh, $1,550 set of four inch speakers with an AMT and the deep double ported. Oh my God, those connectors, but worth it. And it's, uh, I'll stand them up. I'm going to stand them up the way they're supposed to be. These, by the way, are monoprice stands. I could link to those. Those were actually on Amazon. When I bought them, they showed up and they were like monoprice stands. And I'm like, Fuck. see, cause there was an issue. In fact, I'm going to double check that issue right now. Sitting down right again. Just do one more time. Just one more. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm fucking sure. I don't like these speakers like this. In fact, it got so bad. It got to the point where I'm like, you know what? Four inch speaker. Remember when I did the RB42 centers and I'm like, these don't work. These don't sound like they work. So I'm like, what if I take out this pair of speakers, RB42s, which I haven't run in this house until like last week when I brought them upstairs. Cause I'm like, you know what? I've been listening to these monitor audio studios for like, I don't know, it was probably up at that point, like 15 days straight. Like there are $1,500 set of speakers. I have to just use them, just plop them in and use them. And at some point within like the first five days, I opened up my closet door and I turned on the Airmotive uh, SE12 sub because I'm like, these don't have enough low end. I gotta fix that. So boom, I was using the sub before with them. And then after like another fucking 10 days, I'm like, why aren't these impressing me? I, I, you know what? I wonder if the RB42s would be as good. So I whip out the RB42s, literally put these on the floor, set the RB42s up on their sides because they are really unstable like this and just lay them down. And I'm like listening to them. I'm like, you know what? I don't miss the monitor audio studios. I mean, I miss the looks. That is, let's just face it. You've all come. You change your pants, man, woman, child, you just change your pants. Cause those things are stellar looking with the honeycomb pattern in the aluminum thing and the reverse surround and this uh, different color plastic around it that, uh, oh, the wave guy, oh, the, the honeycomb is there too. Oh, and the paint job is just matte and, uh, but I didn't miss listening to them. And I was watching TV shows, heavy duty TV shows. You know, American Gods has got some explosions and there's people talking and yelling. And I'm like, if I swap out to a pair of speakers at one tenth the price, because these are $150 and those are $1,500, am I gonna miss the monitor audio studios? No, I was fully prepared up to like yesterday to just give a review of like, well, these are very pretty and they're not very capable, but don't give them to me yet. I'm going to go down the basement, blah, 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 blah. And then today when I started swapping back and forth, I was like, you know what? I was using this sideways, which put the tweeter like in this sort of horizontal arrangement. And it's so close. Like it really doesn't matter. Um, people complain when I put speakers upside down and things like that. But if you're a tweeter and if you have like a coaxial where it's in the middle, that it really doesn't matter what orientation you're at. But with something like this, it's like, it's so close. It doesn't matter. Well, look who's out for her medicine. We may have to give her her medicine. Um, so I was, I put these monitors, uh, monitor audio studios back up and I gave them a list and I'm like, you know what? RB42s, they're, they're clearly not as punchy. Like these have twice as many drivers, but they don't sound very coherent. Like it, it sounded like the RB42 centers when I tried to use the center channels like this. And I was just like upset by it. I was like, oh, these don't sound very good. What, what do you want? Head rubs? You got it, baby. Um, so I was getting ready to like film this little bit of the review and then go downstairs and be done with it. And then I had this urge 
because here's the thing, studio, studio. So I'm gonna try these in near field downstairs. Up here, it's harder to do near field. When I get them in the basement, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do near field. And I was thinking about recording studios. In fact, Zeus, in the description of this video, please find a picture of a recording studio, which is like the one you're thinking about in your head. So when you see recording studios, there's just a fucking master chair and then the, the fucking mixing console. And there's usually several speakers like lined up around the, the person who's doing the mastering of the music. And the speakers are never like this. The speakers in a recording studio when they are an MTM are almost always like this. And that bothers me because if you know anything about, um, if you know anything about how MTM's work or my complaints about center channels in general is that when you when you use this like as a center channel pretending it's the center channel You have your tweeter, but then you have mid-range coming out of two different sources So if you're dead in line with it, you're fine But as soon as you're off kilter the waves hit you at different points and it sort of muffles itself Now when you go vertical like we had them a second ago That's less important because you just set your height and you're sitting down. Are you rubbing your face on a $500 microphone? That's the tax star tech 55 by the way you're allowed, because you're cute. You're gonna be in every video from now on? I approve. The internet approves, we all approve of Chewbacca being in this, no, no, up. So, I turned them on their side, and everything changed. Because vertically, they should work. They should be fine vertically. But that was the same deal with the RB42 centers. They should be fine vertically, they weren't. Turn these on their side at this sort of distance, and the center image got so much more defined. And the, the incoherency that I was sensing, it was like, ugh, it was like, ugh. It sounded like, ugh. Like the RB42s are better speakers when you lay these, when you stand these up. Fucking one-tenth the price. But I lay them down like this, and then I sit play, and it's all of a sudden, it's like... <laughs> you okay, boobers? Let's get far over here. Wait, wait. It's radiation zone from oblivion. Now, I don't claim to know anything about acoustics, obviously, <laughs> but there's better low end response. There's better imaging. And I have them, well, now, right now, they're not turned properly. That one's way over here, and I have to do things. I may do an entire video on just how to place your speakers, but God almighty, that would be four hours long and I have to put chapter marks in and no one would like it. I mean, people would like it, but I mean, I have such absurd, can I sit on you? I don't want to sit on you, baby. Here, we're going to listen to speakers together, you and me. That's what we do. Next track. Untouchables. So, kick it, 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 kick it. They're not very forgiving. Even in this orientation, they don't forgive you. If that That's a little bit like, uh, but it could just be the room. Again, we're going down the basement for the second half of this review. D do you break my shit? Right, Chewbacca, I love you, but you're, you're like really in my face, girl. You know, this is completely different. I did. I didn't think it would make this big a deal, but apparently I can't wait. I like, I went from like, nah, these speakers are meh, they're all right, but they're pretty, nah, to, oh, sideways, what the fuck did I just do? That could be very dependent on this weird fucking room with the weird angled ceilings and wood and it's not soft, and, but I will be able to tell you this more concretely in the basement because I'm going to set up my little desk there in the little little space and I'm going to set it up vertically and I'm going to be far away and then closer and then closer and then I'm going to turn them horizontally and make sure I get the height right and then we're going to do a test because I think these might be up close on their side where you get where you absolutely point and have perfect dispersion to the, your ear from that because it's not a center channel, I'm not going to ever be here to listen to it. I'm going to always be right in front of it. Always right in front of it. And I think I might be able to get these to be amazing. 
because they haven't sold me in like fucking three, four weeks. It's been, eh, let me pull out my RB42s, which by the way are still exceptional fucking speakers. And when I have them up here, I have pictures in the patronage chat or I was just like, it's just like this like stone lifted stand with just like a little RB42 on it. Like, on 300 watt per channel amplifiers, which by the way, those amplifiers need to be turned up so much higher for the RB42s. Like I'm pretty sure unless you're using a solid 200 watt per channel amplifier, you've never heard RB42s. There is also the fact that those chuff a bit because this port is so small and this has dual ports. Um, I'm not 100% sure if the internals of this are split or if it's a combined chamber and they're just using two ports. Um, I do like the fact that they're completely linear, by the way, bottom and top. And this arrangement, by the way, four ohms, 100 watts, designed in the UK, made in China. Um, look, just uh, th th there's a triangular five-way binding post that's made of like stainless steel. Like that is just fuck. It's, these speakers exude sex, all right? I want to have sex with whoever owns these or has possession of them or has a picture of them in a magazine. That's it. I just want to, it's just, that's, that's what they scream. Now, I'm sure someone in the comments is going to scream out, oh, it's Zeos, but the dispersion of the AMT is completely wrong when it's, I, I don't care. I don't care what something was designed to do. I care what something can do. Apollo 13 reference, it's a great movie. Um, so yeah, I'm done up here with these. They look fantastic. Turning them sideways has given me an invigorated like look at them and I want to go downstairs now into my cold, dark basement where the acoustics are just fantastic and I want to actually listen to these. And I'm going to listen to them near field because if they say studio, it makes me think that they're a near field studio monitor. And if you're going to run them in a room, I fucking I can't not look, you know how much it costs me in dollars to turn these on their side? Zero dollars. Zero dollars, Chewbacca. People don't grasp the concept of just fuck with it. It's audio. As long as you're not buying something expensive, just fuck with it. Move the speaker stand back. Get bricks from your yard. If it didn't cost me anything for bricks, just make them up a little higher. Put them down a little lower. Put them further apart. All this is what's free to play. It's the free to play options. Buying expensive speaker wires is the shit that's like, oh, I bought expensive speaker wires and it sounds different. Yeah, but I bet I could do more work. I bet I could do more good for a speaker just by moving it around for three days than you could ever do spending $10,000 on a speaker cable or a DAC or some fancy French fucking amplification or MQA. MQA, fucking MQA. Anyway, I'm done with this part of this review. Um, let's get them downstairs and really tear them apart or have them just shoot orgasms into my eyes. I don't know. I can't believe the difference. Can you believe the difference? Just laying them down. I feel like I've heard a brand new pair of speakers in the last day. Never heard these in my life. Ah! ah. Soul coughing. So far I have not found the science. Um, so, rearrange the basement yet again, just to do these. Um, reference A800 Behringer, which is no longer sold for some fucking reason. Even though it's their new amp, is powering them. Suncus SGD1, USB to a laptop, laptop on TV, TV speakers, speakers, everything's good. So, um, I started with them horizontal, and it was like, this is weird sounding. Let's turn them vertically and see if they work vertically down here. And... <laughs> I started reading the specs and I found them on Amazon and it's almost impossible to find them on Amazon because if you type in monitor audio studio, you get mm, studio monitors that do audio and that's it. Like you literally can't find it. Uh, Google managed to find like 15 posts down the Amazon link. So I will link that. There's only one left in stock and only in black as far as I can tell. And it's from the official monitor audio store, so it should be available. But down here where it shows the specs of the unit, um, frequency response, a 48, which is pretty good. It's not like mind blowing, but 48's a decent for a bookshelf to 60,000 Hertz. Now humans only hear up to about 20,000 Hertz and that's when we're young children. Maybe a little bit higher when we're young children. So going to 60,000 hertz is one of those, why are you fucking telling me that? Um, 
oh, psychoacoustics, because, you know, your brain, even though you can't hear it, your brain knows it's happening there for you. No, but no recordings do it. Stop. Um, I'm going to reference that 60,000 hertz, because down here I could tell those tweeters exist way more. Um, 86 decibel per watt per meter is not very efficient. Stamp on top of that that they're 4 ohm. 4 ohm, which you have to check your amplification to make sure it is compatible with 4 ohm because a lot of them aren't. A lot of surround receivers will be like 6 ohms is the lowest you can go because 8 ohms is normal, 6 ohms is a little bit harder to drive like my own Walsh's are, are 6 ohm. These are 4 ohm blatant, like that is where they're at. And so they are fucking difficult to drive and yet they only have a power handling of 120 watts. So you have to find like a very, very capable basically power amplifier. Um, by the way, they are two 4-inch drivers that are RDT2s and one MPD high-performance high-frequency transducer, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, nothing else here. Minimizing that. So, listening to them down here. I'm... I'm give me a second. I feel better now. So by turning them horizontally, which I don't know if anyone's telling you to do that or if I'm just the only asshole telling you to do. It's slightly, slightly off center. God damn it. Anyway, a sound rise stands in white on top of stands, on top of wood, on top of bricks. Because uh, welcome to Z Reviews, where homeowners insurance has to cover a lot of things. Um, when you turn them horizontally, which nothing tells you to do that. I, I don't have the manual here to see. I was like, by the way, turn these horizontally because I don't think it's going to say that. The increase in width, like it does, it does what you think about like in a cartoon world where it's like, oh, the speaker's vertical, it shoots up and down. The speaker's horizontal, it shoots wide. It Like literally the same song was just playing. And in this basement, which I consider more treated certainly than that room upstairs or any other parts of my house, you turn it and it's like, okay, now, now I feel like a human being listening to speakers. Like, okay, there's just something interesting. There's something worth that fucking exorbitant price tag. It is, they are not cheap for $1,500. That is not, if these were 800 bucks, I'd have much easier time going, oh yeah, sh these, yeah, okay. I could see them on their side, yeah. 1500 is a lot for a four inch speaker. I don't care how many four inch speakers you put in it, it's still a four inch speaker. They're very inefficient. You have to push them very hard. The bass response is, was better upstairs than down here. We got a lot more dampening in space. So it's like, are you gonna perform? Now I know, and you're all gonna be like, but Zeus, you need to treat it space because I am on the internet and I can do space. Shut up. Because I can put like four other speakers. With those swans, I can put those boot cards. Um, what are the other ones that I had down here that had tremendous low end? Did I do the clips? It was, my, it was another pair of speakers that I put down here. And I was, oh, the fucking, the triangle uh, Alaris. Those all sat in this exact same spot in the exact same space and performed with low end and fucking imaging and like, ah. Uh, so don't tell me to fix the space if it works perfectly for like four out of the last nine speakers. Because the other ones just are underperforming. You are underperforming. And that's unfortunate because you're expensive and you're very pretty. But it's only a four. And if you take two fours, that doesn't equal an eight. Two fours equals like a five and a six inch. I forget what the actual diameter. If you took the, the full area of a four inch driver and then the full area of another four inch driver and added that up, does it equal to how many of a single driver? Someone's doing that math right now in the in the comments. You'll find it in the comments. I'm not not guaranteeing it, but I think someone's down there is gonna be like, well, if you had one four inch driver, it's equivalent to a four inch driver. If two four inch drivers are equivalent to a like six point one inch driver. If you have seven four inch drivers, it's equivalent. So turning them sideways at least makes me interested. Because I, the end user, I represent people watching this who are going to buy something. If I'm not interested in it, you're not going to be interested in it. They're not going to be interested in getting it sold. It's, what the fuck's the deal? I'm going to shuffle for a second. So much better on their side. Oh, my God. Like, it just, it just, they're unusable vertically. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But you turn them on their side, and now all of a sudden I've got, like, 
a bigness. They've got a large spread of sound in front of me. And for some, somehow the bass kicks even better than it does vertically. I do, however, think these are tuned for neutrality. I do think that studio on the front is for, like I found the picture, by the way, the one I was talking about, um, I linked it in my patronage chat, for people who are like, oh, I'm going to a recording studio. It looks like this. Here's my mixing console for doing things. There's always like a beer there. And then you have no remote controls because it's a professional environment. And then you always have the screens and then speakers on top of speakers, next to speakers. And I'd say 80% of the time, if they have a MTM speaker, it's fucking laying down. Mostly because the mixing consoles are so high that they have to, they either have to do this or just lay them down. And just laying them down needs work. Now, the problem is, I don't know who's going to go out of their way to get speakers that are almost impossible to set up. I'm close enough now that I don't think I want to get any closer. I know I said I was going to go like near field, but they're so big and deep that if you made them near field and did them like this, they would just, the tweeter would just, that 60,000 hertz tweeter would just dig out your eyeball because there's no finesse to it. It's a lot of, you know, you get like a swan or you get like an edifier, or you even, well, not really as much triangle, but there, there's been speakers I've reviewed where, hell, even fucking the Klipsch with the, like the RP-150Ms with the big rubberized cone, there's a softness to them. There's a delicacy to them that it's like, okay, come closer. I want to hear you. And every time I get close to these speakers while they're playing, that tweeters are like, hey, I can do 60,000 hertz. You want to hear? Neo Tokyo, I don't have that. That's corn lies, because of course I have all of corn. If you begin to feel overload, we'll begin to feel They're very clear. They're very, very clear. And I think they beat at least the RB42s with that. That tweeter is more capable. I think they're going a little bit wilder with it. Like it's like, hey because it has to sort of be the star of the show. They're getting the, the vocal tonality out of the two fours. You're getting a little bit of bass. You're getting just, just enough, but you're like, do I need a subwoofer? Probably, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. You're probably gonna want a subwoofer, regardless. And then they have to like put the cherry on the cake with the, the, the tweeter. Now, monitor audio, I've been through the rest of their stuff on Amazon. They don't really do AMTs. This is pretty unique in their lineup. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing some weird fucking, of course, deals. they have the entire DBX3492 line that are all AMTs. So I think they've got this, they've got this studio idea going for them and they're running with it and they haven't quite picked who they're gonna sell it to. Because mm, passive speakers in the studio, because they are passive speakers. We can actually look behind them now a little better than before. But passive speakers in a studio God, these triangular, if I could have one thing on every speaker, it would just be these speaker terminals. They've also got, I believe these are mounts that you could unscrew these with hex, hex screws, and then put a bracket or something to mount. There are screw holes here for getting the specific stands for these. In fact, when you look up on, I think it was Google or Amazon, one of those two search results was like monitor audio studio stands because there are specific stands that will actually screw in but then it'll be in the vertical arrangement which i don't particularly like so yeah but I mean, look at the size of the and i feel bad because i actually had to touch them bringing them down i'm gonna have to clean them with like rubbing alcohol because it was like oh my god my hands <sighs> they're so fucking pretty they're so fucking pretty it hurts it hurts how pretty they are it is physically i am physically an ailed an ailed ailment how did I get that? It feels like an old timey phrase. Sit back in my Volvo seat. Um, sitting here with them directly pointed at you because you have to have them. If you're going to do this, you can't you, vertical. You don't put them. I had them on the stands. It was pretty much perfect. The table's, you know, soft covered with yoga mat. So it doesn't do too much as a way of sound reflections. Although I could probably stack things. Or I could just move the table out of the way. Just throw the table behind me and sit here in the middle of nothingness. I don't think that's going to help. I, I like the way these speakers look, and occasionally they bring out the like some amazing sound. Like some amazing sound. I'm like, oh, wow. 
but it's few and far between because it, it does correspond directly with the sound quality of the song, which harkens back to it's a studio monitor. A studio monitor is there to show you your music, not to let you enjoy it. It's there to be a, a, a very adult, very business-oriented sound. It's like, hey, here's what you made. If it sounds like crap, it's because it does. Try harder. But unfortunately, most of you are not going to be mixing and mastering. Most of you are just listening. You got your wallpaper up and your your 50-inch TV in your basement, and you're just like, I'm going to listen to Doors, Unhappy Girl. That actually sounds really good, by the way. If that's one of those things that sounds re really heavy-duty things, like the corn that came on. Very, very complex things. The four inch just can't. It just it just can't. The whole setup is like, ah, I don't want to live here. And it loses its shit. Very, very fine things. Very, very faint things. Very, very quiet. Uh, classical violins and doors and some pianos. But great. Yeah, they love it. It's fantastic. And even if it's not that, it just shits the bed. You Vocals aren't bad. Um, I've heard it, it comes down to like, okay, you've got now six things in front of you trying to make sound instead of just four, which would be like a two way. And I mean, I've dealt with like five way speakers and shit. So it's not like that is the reason. It's just the, the, the placement vertically and it sounds weird. Placement horizontally, it sounds better. We got a good center image, but it's still what's adding that width, that sounding width sort of weirds out vocals a little bit. Just the, the vocals get a little bit smeared. I think that's an actual audiophile review term. We talk about smearing vocals. It's like, it's not there. It's like, and could it be fixed by going vertical? Yeah, I don't think it sounds better vertical. I literally can't listen to them standing up anymore. Not since yesterday. That's perfect, whatever that is. Handsome Family, Natalie Wood. Let's skip forward in that song and see if actually things happen. <laughs> That's gonna get me pulled, but that's a very interesting, like, that's just a good sound. They make good sound. The sound is happening, it's it's a, it's now a beautiful wall, there's imaging. I don't hate them like this. I still think if I'm gonna pay $1,500 or $1,500 plus for a speaker, the odds of it being a four inch driver are very, very low. Very, 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 very low. I mean, like the boot carts are like six and a half. And that's like, okay, that's the, those are like $4,000. And I probably wouldn't say I'd pay for that, but there's a four, there's a six and a half in the front and the back and their DSP corrected self powered. If these were self powered, by the way, and they were just running here with, with wireless connection and you have like a Bluetooth connectivity to one, that would make them worth fifteen and $1,600. That would a hundred percent make them worth it. Because then they would actually, they'd be probably so much better because they'd be DSP corrected. So the tweeter would actually, you know, it wouldn't be as unbridled as it is. It's a very good tweeter. They're showing off this tweeter and it's like, oh, wow, that's clear. But I bought them and I have to sit in front of it. I didn't buy them. The person who loaned them to me bought them. And he's going to have to sit in front of them now. Watch. You know, when you have a, a buy a unit from like Costco, maybe you buy the one that's been sitting on the shelf and it's in demo mode and you bring it home. And it's just showing you all the features and it just keeps going through. Or when you, you reset your car's battery and your fucking car thing goes into demo mode. And it's like, look, it has treble adjust and bass and the flashes, the lights and everything. That's what it feels like these speakers are doing all the time. It feels like they're in impress me in the store demo mode. Quarantine kitchen's on. It feels like I'm in demo mode. It feels like these are not... There are a lot. There are a lot of treble and focus. And when you, I obsessively have a tape measure, fuck it here. It was like, all right, exactly how far are you from the back of the chair so I can get it 100% perfect. Then I leveled the desk. And the, like, if you don't spend 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes, just doing placement things, are you even listening to music? I'm going to do that video where I tell, yell people, yell at people. I should probably do it down here. I no one will ever watch it though, because it'll be something long, and I want people to like have a nice, concise three-minute video that explains it to them, and it'll never happen. 
They're so pretty, I wanted to just be blown away by them. And it's taken so much effort and my soul to just go through it over and over again and go, do I like it like this or do I like it like this? Wait, do they need a sub? Should I adjust the sub? Maybe the sub needs more, cut in more. No, maybe I don't need a sub. But horizontal, vertical, vertical, horizontal, closer, farther. It's like I want them to, I want them to be the best speakers I've ever heard. I want them to live up to the $1,500 range. And they just, to me, knowing what is out there for way less than $1,500, I, I, it's, it's like that scene from fucking Gladiator, and I, I don't want the thumb to go down. I don't want to, please don't. Come on, just just go up. Just, they're so pretty. Just fucking, oh, okay. Okay, there. I've given them the thumbs up now. It, it's, it's permanent. For, I don't know who's buying them. I can't like, yeah, I can't like say, oh, these are garbage. Don't fucking buy these. I think they're overpriced. I think for the size, that they do okay for their size, which is not big. They're very, very deep. I'm going to get up now. They're not very heavy either. They're, they're, they're quite a light. Eh. I had thought about... You're going to ask in the comments, I know. Zeus, can you get one for like a center channel? Yeah, it'd be absolutely fucking bomb tits center channel. I mean, it's not designed for that. And But I mean, I could you could you could do it. Hell, you and a friend can go halves. On, see, but then all then you because for fucking fifteen hundred dollars, that's a seven hundred and fifty dollars center channel that you could buy if you were gonna buy a set of these and split it up and give one to someone else. I should be on eight hundred dollars center channel basically. If that's five, yeah, no, no, I can't. I just I, I love the way they look, and occasionally I love the way they sound. I just can't with conscience be like, yes, you absolutely. These are the best. They look amazing. I, you know what? People ask me if I've done monitor audio, and I would say, I don't remember. Because I did the monitor audio bronze years ago. And I remember liking them. Only after I was reminded I did them. They never stuck out. They never, like, stuck in my head. Like, like I remember doing the um, those fucking uh, uh, PSAs, those big fuckers with the 10-inch. I remember those. I remember the little swans that had the opposite, the tweeter on the bottom that were, like, they were passive swans with a tweeter on the bottom. They looked like Art Deco, but my God, could they image? I remembered those. I don't remember monitor audio. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna remember these because I'm just fucking harking on a fucking. Why don't you just blow my mind already? And it hasn't happened. So I'm done with them. I'm gonna end. I'm gonna do the sound demo now. I gotta go set up my mics. Actually, I gotta do three headphone sound demos. Then when I'm done with that, then take my mics out and set them up here and do that. And then I'm going to have to do, I, I just got a delivery, speak of the devil, of a Swan M300s, which are self-powered, which really don't compete with this, but you know what? They're fucking cheaper than these. And I'm going to bet my bottom fucking dollar they have better bass response and are more pleasurable to listen to without fuckery. Um, but yeah, no. So I want to thank the user who sent these to me. Uh, I've had them for a while. I'm sure we're beyond the return. He doesn't care. He's like, nah, I don't care. I'm going to love them. And you are going to love them. I'd recommend this. Try them horizontally. They look fucking cool as shit. In fact, I'm gonna take the, the thumbnail for the for the for the thing. It's gonna be like Wah. and people are gonna be like, what is that? Or maybe I'll do them vertically. I don't know. Anyway, uh, check out my Patreon, check out my subscribe star. Uh, people in the five dollar tier get to see these videos early. Um, you get to participate in the yard sales. Actually, if you see these videos early, you get to go into the comments and hit first. That's gotta be worth something to someone. People are insane. First, I have first in a YouTube video. That's a Weird Al song, a lame claim to fame. Um, see the videos early. Just been the yard sale. First to the tenth of every month, I sell a bunch of stuff that either companies have sent me or I've bought or people have donated, and I'm just like, I don't need 97 DAPs, so goodbye. Um, Ten dollars a month gets you in the behind-the-scenes private Telegram chat where you can ask me any questions you want, and I'll actually answer them. Asking me questions on platform has been like sort of phased out. I just can't. This is such a high volume. I fall behind after a week, and it's just, just I, I don't I can't hire someone to answer those questions because you're asking me. So I'd rather just either not answer them. Even if you only paid ten dollars for one month, got into the chat, asked me everything you wanted over that the period before the chat gets purged because the chat gets purged every like quarter. It's worth it. It's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. You want me to answer your questions in the chat with my voice, with pictures. You can't do that on, on platform, on Patreon, on Subscribestar. It's the worst messaging systems on earth. Um, 
Check out Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forum. There is a speaker section. You know what? I'm not sure if my mods are making posts for every speaker. I'd like to know what people think about monitor audio in general, but specifically about these if you have them. Have you tried them horizontally? Can you? Please do. I'd love to hear thoughts. I'd love to hear thoughts. And other than that, I think I'm done. Sound demo in the description. Sound demo will be live tomorrow. I'll see you the day after tomorrow for another review, because I do dailies here. There's also an unboxing channel. Zeus, if you're still watching this, because I have to rewatch the video, link the unboxing channel, because not enough people know, because you want to get my initial impressions of something, like how beautiful these fucking things are. Now I've been living with them for a month, and it's like, yeah, they're pretty. When I unboxed these, I was like, jizz master zero. It was fucking crazy. But yeah, oh, and wallpaper. Don't forget to get that wallpaper in the description, so you all could all use the wallpaper. Because it's beautiful, but uselessly. No, she's actually very useful. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Look at a fireplace. That's cool.